Hi, I'm Avon Waters, the Wet Pastelist. Welcome to the Wet Pastel channel. Today I've got something special for you. I'm going to be using three wet pastel techniques in one painting at different times throughout the painting. I'm also going to be using at least three different blending techniques and explain to you how each of those blending techniques differs. Not all blending techniques do the same end result. If you're liking the content in this channel, please hit the like button so others can see it and find it for wet pastel techniques. That's very important, so appreciate your help in that area. Today's video, I will start with a wet pastel technique that many of you are familiar with already using alcohol with a charcoal wash. Clear gesso after I block in the technique. And then near the end, I will try and attempt to show you how to use a fixative and in a wet technique that also creates something of interest near the end. I will explain the palette I'm using, which is an analogous palette. Then I will demonstrate three different blending techniques. One using pipe insulation, one using a brayer, and one using a finger that is ungloved. There's a difference between fingered and gloved fingered blending techniques. Look in the description and you'll see my other videos on nothing but blending and you'll see the subtle differences, but there are differences. I'm doing this drawing from memory. It's a memory drawing of a lake, a lake inlet. So let me get started with that. I'll, let's start with the memory drawing that we would use then to create the color or the pastel techniques. This is the drawing. It's a charcoal drawing that I'll be using and You'll notice on the right and left side and on the bottom there are these tick marks. I've placed those in about the one-third areas, trying to divide the drawing up a little bit. And that will allow me and help me be sure to place some of the points of interest uh, correctly on the 400 UART surface that I'll be using. I've sped up the transferring process. You'll see I put the tick marks on the UART and I'm transferring that over. You will see that those uh, areas are uh, being left for the highlights because I'm going to use alcohol and wash this in. Then the alcohol will uh, be able to pull that over and fill in some of that with the right tonal value. So it's just only a portion of this filled in at the moment. Using the alcohol and my favorite brush, a chip brush, I'm now able to take the alcohol. Uh, I usually start with some of the darker areas so that uh, I can drag that up into the middle tones. So I'm carefully, uh, just a little bit at a time, uh, if I wanted this to be more abstract, I would uh, probably use a lot more alcohol and use some runs. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to create some of the middle tones uh, and then by dragging out of these dark areas, I can create those middle tones and uh, eventually I will you'll see me pull some of those uh, tones up into the lightest of the areas that I left blank. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm trying to, had I put pastel or charcoal, uh, in this case, in those light areas, I would have maybe been in danger of getting the gray values that I try to create uh, in those light areas too dark. So at this particular point, I'm just basically using the alcohol and the wet pastel techniques to create a value sketch, much like what was in the sketchbook. I just keep doing this. Now you can see that I'm dragging that, like I had mentioned earlier, over into that sky area um, because it's not all going to be the same value. So by doing that, I can start to get a sense for where some of these edges of clouds or light and dark may uh, start to appear as I start adding color. 
So again, it's a value sketch trying to trying to fill in uh, some of the variations that I want to look for as I start adding color to this. Let me speed this up just a little bit and then we'll uh, talk about some of the other parts of this. And sped up here, you'll see that I get that all filled in. Um, and uh, we'll slow it back down here and we're back at uh, normal speed here pretty quick. And you'll see that I'm using much more alcohol as I work into that sky so that I can start to get some things to run down. So that's one of the things I love about wet pastel techniques is that uh, you can use these different fluids, in this case alcohol. Uh, I could have very easily uh, washed this in with water, but uh, it wouldn't have had the same drying effect that uh, the alcohol has. So experiment if you haven't used the wet techniques before. Experiment by taking a, a charcoal painting and then uh, using alcohol and then use water on a, another part of it and you'll see some of the differences that you get between water and alcohol. Uh, this was a 91% alcohol. Uh, I think I showed you that in the, at the beginning of that, but um, it dries pretty quick uh, and so it will allow me to uh, move some things around and then they dry and so some of those darker areas will uh, be dry by the time I dip in and come back into them. So I'm not having, unlike water, would stay wet. And every time I go back into them, the water would uh, be wet and I would be pulling maybe too much um, charcoal out of those areas. And in order to keep going, again, 91%, I add just a little bit of heat. This is a heat gun that's got an adjustable uh, thermostat on it. And it's like one of my favorite tools to use uh, when I'm working inside. The heat gun will uh, dry that up in no time and I can just continue on. Okay, this is um, darkening up some of those areas with uh, some uh, charcoal. And then we're going to go into this with uh, a, another wet technique. I'm going to now start with the start with the clear gesso, just a little bit in a cup. And instead of just painting it like you would a wall, I'm using the clear gesso in a way that I am able to dab in uh, areas where those edges of those trees are going to have some texture from leaves and branches and things. So by painting more diligently rather than in broad strokes, I'm leaving a surface that's going to be bumpier. And so when I get to the very end of this painting, uh, you can add or I can add um, little bits of highlight by just using a little bit of light pressure. And as I go into the different parts of this painting with this clear gesso, then I'm going to uh, change the way my strokes go. I had just right there, that's going to be a body of water. And you see I'm going horizontally and down the way the water will flow through this landscape. So uh, don't paint like you're painting the side of a house when you're using wet techniques unless you're doing it on a blank canvas just to get some texture on there. Be diligent, be purposeful, and decide where you're going to put these, these areas. Now down in here are reflections. This is a lake and an inlet. There's um, There were some reeds and things. So um, I'm working in the sky in order to, just like an oil painter, an acrylic painter, I want to build up my textures in my highlight areas. So these are the highlight areas that uh, will uh, left those blank and just fill them in with a light value as I did the alcohol. So now I'm trying to create uh, a little heavier textures in those areas. That gesso isn't being spread out as much as I would in the shadows. So as an oil painter or acrylic painter using impesto, 
um, that is what I'm trying to do is build up the texture so that I can create layers on the uh, highlights, uh, the edges of what might be clouds or might be a bright area. It might even be a sunset. Again, this is this is letting the painting kind of tell me where it goes. Yet, I have a purpose. I want this to be an inlet, so it's probably not going to turn out abstract. Let's fast forward this to uh, start talking about the palette that was selected for this. The analogous palette that I've chosen is in the red-orange to orange to yellow-orange. And after I select that, then I go to my box and I pull out the uh, different values there. Now you see a violet I pulled out um, because that's going to be one of the complements that I'll show you here. And there's the complement side, the violets, blue, violets, and blue. So then I went to the box and I tried to pull some of those darker values out, which would also include some oranges uh, because they're out of a different value set. You see there's uh, some of those dark oranges, especially on the right hand side, dark violets. So by picking out different sets of pastels and different values, I can go from light to dark in any of those analogous colors and they'll work out well together. Using those colors I selected, I blocked this in and then used the pipe insulation. But the camera died and I didn't catch it, so I apologize for that. Now I'm adding some brightness to this uh, by using different um, colors or color hues, but still in that uh, um, analogous palette range. And as long as I stay in those analogous colors, everything will go well together with this. So um, let me speed this up and you'll see uh, how all those colors, um, because they are related to one another in color hue, uh, they work well. Now I'm going in and I'm working the entire piece all at once so that I can uh, blend these colors. I'm trying to brighten up where the water and the reflections are, uh, trying to push some of those areas uh, back by selecting, again, staying all in the same uh, selection of color hues, but analogous colors, it will continue to work. Now, I'm going to stop this and show you where we are starting to use some blending tools and um, the brayer is one of those. This is nearing the end of using this tool. As you can see, the sky has been blended together and it's lost a lot of its pop, but that's the end process. It's like putting the highlights and the sparkle in somebody's eyes in a portrait or the, the sparkle in a still life uh, vase or a piece of glass on the table. So right now, by using this tool, I'm able to push some of these colors together. And because I'm using the palette I used, the oranges are the opposite of the blues, and the red oranges are the opposite of these pale oranges down in here, having had that, that violet and blue on my roller. I'm creating some grays, but they're getting kind of dark. And so at the very end, using the texture that's on here, I will pop those highlights back out and probably with my finger, um, without the glove, because the texture and blending is different with the glove than without the glove. Be sure to watch my video on blending techniques using many different blending techniques. But this will join these colors together and create that harmony that I want. If I left this with all this texture from the gesso that was added, if I left this, then it would all have the same texture. And the goal here is to pile up the highlights and let the pastels uh, pop 
just small areas of this and then to scumble over some of this texture and create just a little bit of interest at the edges of clouds and the edges of trees. You don't want the same texture over the entire piece. Otherwise, your eye is not drawn to any particular place. So that's what this tool allows me to do, is come in here and blend some of these colors so the palette becomes more harmonious. And everywhere this flat edge hits is creating a little bit of interest close up on that background. And then the scumbling of those pure colors over will make things pop at the end. As you can see, the blending with the roller dulled this down quite a bit. The goal here now in the finish, this is where the magic happens, is in the finish. If you can work yourself through the ugly process, a lot of people would stop here. And stopping here means that you have missed the opportunity to take something to a finish. So it's the finishing touches, just a few touches of a pure pastel in a few areas. Again, we want the texture to help us. We don't want to go over this entire painting at this particular point and create areas that are textured throughout the entire painting. So dragging this over only in a few areas with a few specific little touches here and there will let us begin to show some of the highlights and create some contrast that will make this thing sparkle. While the brayer blended everything together, at this particular point in the finish, it's just a matter of a few pieces of pastel and a few colors to highlight some of the things we're wanting to accentuate, like the edges of clouds. We don't go over the entire piece. And I need to come back in here. I'm using my glove right now, but I'm going to come back at the end. When I put in a, a nice yellow-orange on the rim of these clouds, I need to come back in here with my finger and leave this area at the top where it contrasts with the dark. I need to leave this area, but I need to blend this area down. And, and I can do it with the glove, but it's not the same appearance as if I use my finger. So as I work towards the end of this piece, I'm going to take this glove off and I'm going to accentuate some of these areas where I'm just very lightly scumbling across. And if you don't understand scumbling, see some of my other, my other videos. And where I'm trying to create contrast with light against dark, with this scumbling process, I need to drag those areas underneath where the light meets the dark and drag those areas and blend and I'll just take my glove off right now and show you. I need to blend not where the dark meets the light but just at the bottom of these marks blend into some of those gray areas. The gray is very very important that you create with the brayer you're creating grays because when you put a more saturated color against a gray, that really makes it pop. There's two ways to make contrast. Well, there's several ways to make contrast. A complementary color, like a blue against an orange, which is kind of what we've done in here, and a gray a grade down value against a more pure value. Now I'm grabbing the orange and I'm coming in here and creating some of these over this texture that I created. I'm creating some of these areas that will have this more pure orange. 
for the edges of some of these clouds that are receding underneath the cloud layer. And I'm going to stick just a little bit of scumbling in here against this blue-violet. And we've got to stick some of that that's in the cloud so it marries or coordinates with what's underneath here in these reflections. And I'm not making, I'm just making a few marks like you would see in ripples of water. And I'll take my glove off and I will create these areas that represent a little bit more of what we're trying to to accomplish. You can already see that this contrast has come up some and that's what we are after is to try to create that. Let me take the glove off. I'm going to drag some of these areas down into this so it mixes with the blue grays that we created under it but I'm not touching. The thing you have to understand is I'm not touching the upper edge where the light connects with the dark. I'm only dragging down to blend into those grays we created with that brayer. And that's one of the secrets that you get as you learn how to use different blending techniques. Okay, this is Spectrafix. Spectrafix comes in a concentrate that you add with pure alcohol or something close to pure alcohol. I've used Everclear, which is like $30 for a um, half gallon or three-fourths of a gallon. I don't know how many liters that is. But I take this and one concentrated bottle you can split into four of these containers. And you can spray this on in a controlled manner and create drips. Spectrafix is really good for pastels. Unlike other fixities, Spectrafix, when you spray it on, darken things, but when it dries, it is made out of a milk casein. And when it dries, it will uh, preserve the values much, much better, about maybe 90% better than other fixatives. Now, I would like to see if I can create runs and drips out of the sky to come across this painting. It may ruin it for this example, but if it ruins it, I can fix it. But for this example, I want to try to use this as another fixative across the top of this and try to get some drips to come down through here. I'm not going to spray anything. I'm just going to, I'm not going to spray anything lower than this at this particular point. And I'm going to see if I can create some drips that will create some more interest as this dries. I am after something more than what the pastel techniques will give me alone. So at this particular point, I'm going to keep spraying across here until I get some drips that come down and across this entire thing. So it will become very obvious, become very obvious that I have tried to use dripping techniques to create interest in what otherwise would be a static piece of pastel work. So I'm working my way down, determining where I will stop. Now see how dark this is? This will lighten back up because Spectrafix, like I said, will keep you about 90% of your true values, if not higher. So let's let that dry and we'll see if we got some drips that make the sky more interesting. I think I'm going to come down in here and do the same thing at the base of these trees. I'm going to like start to try to drip across these trees. I'm coming in close. I'm about three inches away from the base of these trees. And underneath these trees is the lake. And let's see what happens.
like I said, it could just fail and I have to fix this after the video is over. Okay, you can see just a little bit of these drips in here. These aren't quite dry yet, but there's a drip, there's a drip, there's a drip, and this area is dry. Matter of fact, look, I cannot even pull off because the Spectre Fix has fixed this. I will, I will probably come in here after this video and pop up some of these highlights very sparingly and down in here, but you can see how the Spectre Fix hasn't changed the values like other fixatives do. So this is a great technique near the end to create some texture in some areas that otherwise would just be pastel painting. And that's what wet pastels allow you to do, wet pastel techniques. There's some great little areas in here that are darks against lights and uh, the Spectre Fix is going to let that stay but it's going to have dripped down some of these areas. I can touch this. I can, there's very little pastel, hardly any stuff coming off of this. So Spectrafix is a really, really good fixative. And some of these areas down in here, I suspect will, like this area right here has not been hit. I can pull a lot of pastel off of this, but I can't pull hardly any off of these areas where the Spectrafix was. So it's a great fixative, so even if you don't do this at the end of your painting, but I wanted some of this, I wanted some of this interaction, this wet technique to blend with this soft pastel. Soft pastel is great, but soft pastel alone, after a certain number of years working with it, it's like you want to get some other variations, and this is where the wet techniques will really come in handy. Well, that's a quick summary. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're liking this, please hit the like button. The like button will help others see this. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you are a subscriber, please, please, please hit that like button because it does help others see what people are searching for as far as wet pastel techniques. In summary, we've gone through how we began the painting with just a charcoal drawing and used a wet pastel technique and then how we took after that dried how we took the colors and blocked those in and then how we blended with a brayer and how we blended with pipe insulation and how we blended with our fingers how we followed some of those ghosts created by the charcoal and the alcohol to create a block in then how we used pipe insulation to blend then how we also, in summary, use the wet gesso to create a texture that we could use at the end of the painting to create highlights. And show you how the brayer then smoothed things out and created grays. So hopefully you got something out of this. And if you're liking these videos, again, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please do that also. But until next time... We'll have another great video using wet pastel techniques. And next year, we are going to start in the composition and talk about the different compositions that are available to pastelists. So until next week, so long, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed this. So take care. Bye-bye. Happy painting.